happy you're back or I'm happy you just joined us. And uh, I got to tell you all, this is the this is the fourth roundtable. And of all the roundtables, boy, am I, you know, excited to, to listen to this one. And that's because, and you won't hear me say this often about anything, I don't know the first thing about what you're all about and anything that you do and are expert in. And no no pun intended to use these. This, this stuff is all Greek to me. Okay, and so so I'm really looking forward to listening to the discussion. And the only thing I know about faith and spirituality is your constitutional right to exercise whatever faith and spirituality you choose. Under, and in Canada, under Section 2A of the Constitution, and even before that, under the unwritten constitutional principles, uh, these rights were enunciated in the 50s by the Supreme Court of Canada in a trilogy of uh, Jehovah Witnesses cases. And the court said that uh, free speech, uh, uh, free speech, religion, and conscience were at the basis of our constitutional order. So these are long, uh, long, uh, you know, fought for rights in general terms. But uh, uh, so uh, that's all I know about this area. So I'm going to turn it over to Lor uh, to uh, uh, Lori Ladd, our moderator, and I'm just going to listen. I, I'm not even going to pipe in unless somebody needs a legal opinion, okay? Go ahead, Lori. Thank you, Rocco. It's such an honor to be here with all of you guys today. Um, so there's basically three questions that I want us to dive deep into today, and we'll navigate this in the 45 minutes that we have, but I want to talk about how we've all been viewing this current shift in the human collective and the human consciousness and what, what we've been noticing, both our own internal experiences and the external. Um, what are the breakthroughs and struggles that we've been noticing as the human collective has been making this shift? And then what can we do now as individuals and as a part of this collective to really assist the shift that we're going through? And I'll start by saying that one of the most miraculous experiences that I've been watching, especially this past year, is how we have been stepping into freedom and sovereignty. Um, and sovereignty is really about what is my truth? What is my voice? What do I stand for? Um, who am I? Um, what do I want? And really kind of breaking free from this, these external powers that have sort of controlled me or told me what is my truth, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's an exciting time for me. And I would love to ask all of you, how are you viewing this current experience? How are you viewing this massive collective shift that we're all going through? Um, Jason, do you want to start? Yes, yeah, uh, sure. Okay, thanks. I've been looking at myself when I get uh, reprimanded on social media by the Facebook giants or the social media giants, and I'm finding myself under behavior modification as well. I feel the pressure to change my behavior, and I'm, I'm having to dive really deep in knowing the behavior modification psychology that I study a lot as a self-sabotage coach. I'm finding I have to dig myself out of it personally, and it, it can get really taxing, and I know what's going on. I know the behavior modification and the psychological manipulation that we're, we're under, and it's not only getting me to become a stronger person and use my voice in a stronger way. I know I really have to do that. There's people out there that, that are not aware. I, I imagine how nervous they are and how much pressure they're under. If they don't know that this is all a big, very large and very elaborate psychological operation, I, I feel heavy and it empowers me more. I feel like it's sort of a now or never, it's us or them. And I'm finding the energy flowing into me and I'm channeling, I'm, I'm, I'm using it to push into the collective in a more gentle way than I'm used to as well. Cause I know people are scared out there and I'm trying to diffuse the fear a little bit. So I do find my evolution and my acceleration and my progress is being accelerated. And I can imagine everybody here on the panel is feeling the same way that there's a pressure as a truth teller to sharpen the message and really know that there isn't a lot of runway here. 
we have to make sure we push as, as a group and we're trying to wake up as many people as possible. I mean, the science is 20% of a group can sway the entire group. And so that's what I'm sort of feeling personally. If that, I hope I answered your question properly, Lori. Yeah, I love it. I think, I think the, the gentleness that you're starting to step into is so important right now um, in, in trying to shift an entire human collective. Uh, learning how to do that with more gentleness. Um, Zesis, how about yourself? I'd love to hear. Unmute. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited. Personally, I've been super excited from the very beginning. I think this is the greatest love story ever being told and that's being unfolded right now before our eyes. It's an incredible time to be alive as a human being and to watch this all manifest. The construct is what the construct is, what you believe to be will be. So what you adapt will then um, magnify in that way. So I choose to be a beacon of love. And regardless of what my external environment is, I have this detached curiosity of, and excitement of what's gonna happen next. This is exciting because I already know we're all leading back into unity. The fabrics are collapsing as we speak. And there are telltale signs. All the all the ma major institutional paradigms are collapsing before our eyes. And as we begin to see more and more of this collapse, we will see more and more of this pressure being released. It's the unexpressed stories that need to be heard right now. So we need to all hear them because they've been unexpressed for thousands and thousands of years. And as we validate those, then we as a humanity will decide, what do we want it to be? So for me, I'm, I'm really looking forward more and I can feel with palpitation where we're going right now. Thank you. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. Lucia. Hi, thanks for having me here. Um, I'm excited too. I incarnated to be here now and I think it's a prophesized time. We've been waiting for all of us to sit together collaboratively and look what we're doing today. So powerful. And you know, this... Fear, false evidence appearing real. How do we share that it's not real? And we are the co-creators of our reality. And I remember I was listening to the first few speakers and there was talk about fear of speaking out because maybe someone would lose their job or maybe someone would lose this or be reprimanded and so forth. And I understand that from a perspective of being verbal and loud, but because I work with nature kingdom and the animal kingdom and the insect kingdom and my inner kingdom, I realize that our strongest voice is the nonverbal voice. And so for everything that I teach and train with is about going within and connecting with all of our six subtle senses and possibly more than that and communicating our truth from that level. And for those of us who have a fear maybe of speaking out loud or being on some social media or something else, we can actually send a message possibly even stronger from the nonverbal realms in our dream time, in the real time. And so my journey around the world in the jungles and everywhere else and with the animal kingdom, that's been the big reminder. The nature kingdom has been co-facilitating this remembering of our nonverbal skills to activate change. And we're here this time now, you know, some of our non-encoded DNA is finally being reactivated to remember who we always were. Um, so, I'm excited, obviously, and I'm so excited to be here with all of you, and thank you. Amazing. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've been noticing in this past year, specifically in terms of um, stepping into or stepping out of this belief that we've been free when really it's sort of been somewhat of an illusion, um, is millions of humans are beginning to learn what their truth is, what their voice is, what, what do they stand for? Not what has an authority figure sort of told me to believe or an authority figure um, told me to do. There's this really empowered state that I think a lot of humans are stepping into, which is part of my, I believe, the evolution of this human consciousness which is that we become free and sovereign. And so how have you guys, I would love to talk a little bit about 
speaking up, speaking our truth, um, breaking free and what that feels like, what that looks like, how can we continue to do that? Um, and, and because I think that we here are used to that. We've been doing that probably for a very long time. Now we're doing it more. But what about those that are just stepping into it, especially with social media, especially with censorship, especially with bullying, um, all of the things that we're really feeling right now as we start to speak up, because speaking our truth is what's really important, I think, right now. So, um, Jason, I'd love to start with you. How are you seeing this in terms of speaking up, speaking your truth, standing firm in in your knowingnesses and really starting to step into that more and more? Well, I think what we're seeing today is there's, there's a natural rite of passage that all humans have to take from children to adults. And I know that's being stagnated by the structures of control that are sort of dominating us right now. So what we're seeing is this massive acceleration where we do see people Making this rite of passage, you're supposed to traditionally and through ancient cultures make it at about 14 years of age. But now because of the pressure, you know, you see it like this, this massive pressure turning the coal into a diamond. People are deciding to take these rites of passage because of the corruption and, and the tyranny. And they're, they're literally stepping into their adult selves. So for anybody that's doing that, it can be a very nerve wracking transformation, letting go of the old and stepping into the new, letting go of the per parent figure and becoming the independent person you were meant to be. But if anybody needs some advice, yes, they're on social media and just like a child that's becoming an adult they can trip over themselves their their voice can crack it can be embarrassing but if you want to break in to social media and you want to gain the attention and respect of people uh, like Robert Kiyosaki says you know a question opens the mind and a statement closes the mind it was very important on social media to lead with questions like is the PCR test an accurate representation for the positive cases, question mark, leave your video, leave your article, or why do these doctors say not to take the COVID vaccine, question mark, leave your video, leave your article. The, this is a very important, uh, it's different, it's more effective, and it's a lot more effective than you know arguing with people and trying to state facts, ask a question. So congratulations on everybody that's making this transition from child to adult. It's better late than never. We are, you know, there's, there's a limited runway and it is exciting to see everybody waking up. People in the truth community have been waiting for this, for this time. We certainly don't like that the crisis had to come around and the pressure has to be so intense, but it's better late than never. And, the, and we, we eagerly await this new world where, yes, we're going to manifest our own reality and adults will be adults and children will be children. And any adult that dares, you know, act like a child, a child in their adulthood will be severely dealt with because they pose the greatest danger to the society, according to my observations. People that are of adult age that do not act, you know, talk, walk, and think like an adult, this is how we've gotten here. So we have to go back to the ancient traditions as well and make these very valuable rites of passage. And we have to reintegrate them into our rituals and our ceremonies with our children so that we, we get strong adults in the leadership positions. Because if you look in the leadership positions today, obviously we, we have children Ma you know, they're masquerading as adults, they're children in those positions. So we have to rework the entire society. And this is, as the uh, existing institutions collapse, I think this is a good opportunity for us. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've been calling the, um, the, uh, the adult or the authority figure sort of like these, um, these wolves in sheep's clothing right now, right? Like they kind of look a certain way and we're starting to be like, wait, we're starting to look through it. It's like, no, that is just a mirage. That's not really what we're seeing there. Um, so thank you, Jason. Zesis? I, I agree with Jason in that um, this is a rite of passage collectively as a human race. Uh, we're all going through this together. So the, the process of awakening uh, for me has always been... Um, and there are other points there within the gentleness, which I'll, I'll touch upon too. For me, it's always about um, feel, play, create, and share, right? What, what inspires you? 
Start with yourself. What inspires you? Feel that. As a heart worker, you know, we've, we've been entrenched in our mental processes way too long. And as a, as a polarity organ, you're always going to have the negative and the positive. So you're always having these feedback loops. You're, you're never ending in that. However, if you drop into the heart as a point of singularity, it's a point of unity. So feel, allow. And as you feel and allow, you start to play, start to enjoy. The flow starts to come within you at that point in time. You're allowing the flow of the divine of the universe to manifest through you. And as you play, you create. And when you create, you share. And look what happens when you share. You inspire others, right? I think it's a recipe to, to change the world. Right, because one of the things that I always think about when I'm teaching or just when I'm being is sometimes the beingness is more important than the speaking. Um, the, the energetic sort of response that comes from the beingness can be more potent um, than well, the actual will, physical words. I will add in the, um, there's a great in, um, institution, the HeartMath Institute in uh, Northern California, and they've done amazing research on the global coherence. And the coherence is the, the, the mind, heart, uh, co uh, collective uh, uh, stability, let's say, or uh, harmony of both. And as we have major shifts, um, disruptions, you can see that coherence drop. So collectively, we're all little energy packets. What our thoughts are being produced is magnifying and attaching into the whole collective of Mother Earth. So you want to change the world, start with yourself, as they say. Be that beacon of light, regardless of what you see, the illusion in front of you. And watch that magnify. And I think Jason said it earlier, you need 20% collective and then everything shifts. Absolutely. Lucia? Consensus reality, <laughs> co-creating new realities. And that's the gift we've been given. And so for me, it's always been about, you know, teaching the fishermen to fish. And we're very fortunate because everyone's talking now about integrative medicine and complementary medicine. And everyone's finally dropping this word of alternative. It's not instead of. And so integrating with our medical systems and bringing in a lot of the ancient teachings and the nonverbal teachings, as well as what we call consciousness-based energy medicine, we're here now. And we're sitting together today and we're collectively sharing our thoughts. So then... In the world, there's a lot of so-called modalities coming out that are supporting individual people being able to learn how to keep their inner selves in a state of equilibrium. And once they get into that state of equilibrium and they start to let go of the intellectual mind that thought it was in the mass or in control, they start to be able to engage into this journey to the heart brain or um, the wisdom of the heart. And it's not always an easy journey. And I think we're in a time where years ago, years ago, years ago, it was a long, arduous journey. Something's happened. And this journey is a quickening. And when people go through that process of leaving the intellect and dropping into the heart brain and integrating the enteric brain and the intuition, bring the wisdom to the soul and all of those jargons we use, that's great. But then where are the mentors? And so I think some of us sitting here today are saying, you know, some of you that are out in the world that are mentors for people that are awakening, whether they tried or not, they're in the quickening, um, be there for them and teach those ones how to fish and take care of themselves simultaneously to being the leaders and the warriors and whatever words we like to use, but we're now doing it from the heart. And, you know, for me as a nature, the animal kingdom, or it's, we're actually, you know, we're not like called them animals anymore. They're sentient beings. They never forgot their connection to oneness and that living from the heart and being in the moment, being in the now. So being able to co-facilitate in nature settings with the sentient beings they call animals, whether it's elephants, tigers, horses, doesn't matter. There's a remembering of those ancient teachings that some of you have been talking about that's in our DNA. And as we're going through this process of change, some of this non-encoded DNA, the junk DNA is being activated. And for a lot of you listening to us, it's happening to you whether you're trying or not. Mm -hmm. It's called the hundredth monkey. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my, thing, my thing is be there for each other, be collaborative and honor integrative medicine on all levels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. 
as you were speaking, as all of you guys were speaking, that what the other doesn't, the next sort of thing that came to me was, you know, this massive shift that we're, that we're experiencing on a collective level, it's an energetic shift. And the beautiful piece, at least for myself, that I'm noticing is it's calling me at least and people that in my, in my immediate surroundings back here, right? Like it all has to start here. And, and from this place is where we make the change, right? And so I don't know about you guys, but this past year has been like the most amazing year, but also the most like transformative for myself. Um, I have gone through so much tr um, transformation in order to show up in an even more potent and powerful sovereign uh, truth speaker sort of way. So I would love to talk a little bit about what does that mean to sort of start to break free from the external and come back here? Why is that important? Why are we all being directed back to ourselves? Because we all are in order to start to do what we came here to do. Um, so what is this? This, this, this breaking apart, coming back here and why? Why is this happening? Jason? That's a pretty complex question. <laughs> but the human spirit needs to be free. And that's probably the most simple answer. We're looking to decentralize the power. This is the dream of everybody that's enslaved right now is we have to get away from the decentralized power and the power is being lorded over us. So what we do is, yes, we do come back to our individual routines. I've come back hard to my individual routine. I literally have to get up out of bed every single morning and say, build your power, build your power. Because I know this system is like an energy grid. It literally siphons off the energy of its victims. And my determination is when I get up every morning is to build more power for myself, to build my dreams, to help people, to mentor them and to be a role model. So yes, we're coming back to ourselves because if we integrate into these corrupt and ugly and futile systems, it's like us plugging into, to, you know, for lack of a better phrase, the matrix. And it just literally sucks us dry of all our dreams it terrorizes rational thought if you, you, you plug into the collective today, terrorizes logic and ethics and morality. So we are removing ourselves from everything around us to find our power again, only to know that we're going to have to build our own personal power and then re-engage at a later time with the collective to build this brand new world. So this is what I'm doing. I know what you're saying. I'm retreating inward, but I'm not retreating in the sense that I feel like I'm weaker. I'm getting more adherent to my positive routines, positive thought, nutrition, clean water, good sleep, exercise, and then using that wizard, white wizard power to try and role model for anybody that wants to kind of say, how, how can I get into a better situation in the world that we have right now? I kind of hope that people can see that's possible. And I, have, I as well have changed. I've started six businesses in the past seven months, <laughs> just trying to modify to make sure that I can sidestep the tyranny and keep building my own personal power. And if anybody wants to know what this is really about, this is about everybody escaping from their system, unplugging, and then them coming at us with authority in trying to make us re-plug into their systems that use us as batteries to power their corruption throughout the world. So it's very important to de look at the long-term goal of decentralizing power, but also building that personal power in your life so that you can wield it like a white wizard into areas that are going to benefit you, your family, and your immediate community and your extended family. I don't know if that answered the question, but that's the sort of transition I'm seeing going inward, building more power. That was beautiful. Beautiful. I loved it because really quickly, the only way to be, to, to stop this enslavement um, is to recognize that we've been enslaved and there we can, we can do this. We can have another question after this, but most humans, a lot of humans, millions of humans don't even realize they're enslaved. Right. So there's that piece as well. Um, uh, Zisus. Yeah. Similar, you? similar, uh, just a slight tant on it. Uh, the, you know, I think ev everything is, an, um, everything is an expression of love. Love is always navigating itself back to love. Right. 
So for me, this past year has been more uh, consolidation into that heart space, the connection with the deep, deep connection with the other hearts. So that's been my work. Um, I think it's really crucially important, though, uh, as part of the process, because I do agree it's a process for people as they sleep, as they awake. You know, what I'm witnessing and what I've seen is these truth truthers or these and they take their sword of truth in this harshest of ways and flail it around as they're cutting off heads. <laughs> you know, that's not what it is. You know, there's so much compassion. There's so much love. There's so much care. That's what unity is. So this is happening because we are divine expression of love and we're being called back into love. The story we tell us, we tell each other, our individual story is the story we tell each other that we want to know and how we come back into love. So you choose how you, how you want it to play out. You choose. That's the beauty about being a sovereign being. But it's always back to love. It's Laurie, always- I'm sorry for interrupting, Laurie, but it, as a lawyer, it just comes by second nature. You know, I can't help myself. But it was just a I, matter of time, Jason. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> no, but I heard, and I want some clarification for, you know, uh, reptilian minds like mine. I heard an expression that I'm very intrigued to get a clarification uh, of, because not everybody on this on this call is going to have the 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 level of consciousness that you do when you use the word heart brain does that i'd like it i'd like a a more detailed explanation and does that include what i use a lot in my practice in life uh, intuition sixth sense and instinct can you can you can you explain the heart brain yes so as you understand it it would depend on who you're asking and their teachings okay um So if we want to go deep esoteric, the energy of oneness or the soul emanates through the heart and an aspect of the heart, and it creates an energy field around us. But our enteric brain or our gut brain is the seat of our intuition. And it's the discernment of information that gives that information to this brain of the heart, this ultimate brain that also connects to this knowing of oneness. And in the past, we kind of got cut off at the head thinking all the information came from this intellectual brain and we got rewarded for it. And what we're saying now is that um, we're actually taking our intuition from our enteric brain, letting it arise to the wisdom of the heart or the soul or the state of oneness or collective oneness, universal consciousness, and then letting that information get given to this amazing computer to go out and do things with. And so this is an interesting journey that we've put ourselves through and we're going through and it is in a quickening process. Um, And I do have a question for you in a while when it's the right time about some words. So um, that's just my perspective. You know, I'd like to hear someone else too. I would, I'd love to jump in as well, Rocco. Uh, So the Taoists believe there are three brains, right? The upper, middle and lower Dantian, right? They all have a brain center. From a, from a science perspective, in 1991, they discovered some very unique neural receptors within the brain, about 97,000, congregated in such a way that it would be reflective like a brain. So they call this the small brain, right? And they've noticed that when these neural, neuronal um, neuroreceptors actually find pathways within the actual brain, because the brain is... Uh, taking signals from the heart. Actually, there's three times more signals going from the heart to the brain as opposed to the brain to the heart. The heart is magnetically more powerful than the brain, electrically more powerful than the brain. So in a way, it is, in my view, the master organ. And that's, does that help with the, uh, the brain, the heart brain? Yeah, no, it, it helps me in understanding that sort of terse, uh, terse uh, 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 term that was used earlier by Miss Jacob that, uh, you know, I have my own view of what it could mean, but that's why I was asking for clarification. It's very fascinating. Yeah. 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 Fascinating mm-hmm. for us too. <laughs> and, and in fact, these nerve disp- uh, receptors independent of the heart actually are independent. They feel when, when we are exposed to a situation there are two things that are happening. We're processing it cognitively and we're processing it from the heart, the feeling. Right. So when, when you have these traumas, 
you know, and you want to let go of the shadow, there's, and we talk to a therapist, it's the cognitive aspect that are, are we're really relying on, but there's so much unexpressed emotions that the heart needs to uh, let go of. And this is why I love the work the Lord is doing with the animals. It's allowing the unexpressed heart intention um, and, and facilitating from the animals in the plant kingdom. Yeah, and just a, a little aside on that, when we have this heart field, whether it's of a horse, an elephant, or a dog, it's it's so pure in its potential that that resonant factor happens, and our heart correlates to that um, pureness, and it starts to let go of uh, traumas and so forth that we don't even know we have because the heart is so happy to go into resonance with this pure heart. And when we can go into areas of the globe where these so-called uh, animals we are now call sentient beings are still in their wild state they don't have the uh, false re the false belief systems of the human layered on them there's an even deeper level of purity there that we can uh, go through shifts or if we're in the jungle sitting with the trees and so on and so on um yeah i love it <laughs> how do we move deeper into that space that would be my question right like how do you move from the mind down into that space for me, I would just like to mention, uh, we talked earlier about uh, false identities and the masks that we wear and the identities that we think we are. And part of the process is letting go of those external identities. I'm not that, I'm not an international facilitator. I'm not a mother, I'm not a that. Those are all these identities. I don't drive a big truck or whatever. And that's the painful part that we heard earlier. I think it's Jason, right? Was talking about that's, that's painful for some people because they've connected to that false identity themselves. As that starts to fall away, we realize we're, some huge aspect of that is who I really am. That's having this experience in this physical vehicle or avatar we're calling a body. It's a so I can just do that. Say I'm not a lawyer. Bye. <laughs> right. You. You. You're. you're I'd love to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're using this amazing, powerful uh, concept of being a lawyer to unfold something that is so big beyond the lawyer. I'm so honored with what you're doing. By the way. And uh, undoing. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you were giving me a license to leave. And that's right. <laughs> Lori, I think no. it's the. I think it's uh, for me. It's quite simple. I think the the the, the deepening of that is for me um, connecting with your connecting with my breath. That's the first part. The breath is the first thing we take when we come on this planet, and the last thing we do when we leave, right? And how many of us allow the breath to breathe us as opposed for the we to breathe the breath? It's different and changing perspective. Allow the breath to breathe you. What does that mean exactly? Wake up in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, close your eyes. Just slightly open your jaw and just allow the breath to be. Allow. Don't do anything. Don't control. Don't do anything. Just allow. And as you're sitting there or lying there, allowing the breath to be, focus on your heart. Focus on this marvelous muscle that's been keeping you alive. Focus on the memories that you may want to focus on, love, compassion, courage, those positive things. And for me, that's a daily practice before I wake up and before I go to sleep. Not to mention every con conscious moment now more and more. That's the deepening for me. Because I recognize everything is a divine expression of love. And I, th I think that when we can go into that deep place, it starts to release the shackles of enslavement that have gone back. We're not going to talk a lot about Adam's calendar and the places I take people but letting go of all of those programs that have been put into this vehicle and that dolphins in the wild that i swim with they call it the quantum love gene and yeah. when you go into that place you're talking about and as simple as with your breath it starts to break free these shackles of the illusion of it of enslavement and um it's so simple it's so simple yet so profound yeah We're thank you we're spending so much time with distractions, with division or divisive ice aspects of life, you know. And I think the focus is if we just spend little, little bit of energy within those simple exercises and 
and creating that feel within us, um, not only will it change you, you will change your immediate environment of just being who you are in that, that expression. It's profound. I also notice when you find, when you start listening or, or not even listening, when you start feeling your breath more and more and every now moment, it, it brings you into a present moment state um, which reduces anxiety and stress and worry because anxiety, stress, and worry is based on a f- future or a past for the most mm-hmm. part. So if you're in a present moment state, you'll be able to sort of relax through any anxiety, stress, or worry. It, it'll start to move through you a little bit easier. Um, and the second thing I notice when I breathe, and it's funny because most humans don't realize they're breathing, is that you are aware of what you're feeling. And if you're aware of what you're feeling, then you'll be able to move through those emotions because I see emotion as like a cloud or like, I see it as energy, it's energy. And I see it as like, oh, I'm feeling depression and I feel it like, oh, it's moving through my body. And if I ignore it or like distract myself externally with things, then it just kind of hangs out. Whereas if I'm with my breath, it's like, oh, here it goes. And I can kind of process it more and let it move through me. Um, And then the body is more, uh, able to hold uh, higher states of consciousness really is what I call it. Um, more of who you are and who you have always been. Um, I think my experience is when you allow that, when you allow that expression, you're allowing the divine flow to come through you. And as you begin to feel more, you magnetize to more. So it's, it, it, it creates an open circuit for the divine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and go, coming back to sort of what Jason said about this enslavement and Lucia said about this enslavement, which is what we're really breaking free of, the more we come into that heart brain, the more we come into our body, the more we come into our breath, which is really, I think, what the past year has allowed us to do. It literally started to dissolve all the external, like we couldn't go to work anymore. We couldn't, there's all these things we couldn't do. Why? Because there's a divine plan. It was like, I guess what? You guys have to come back here because so many people need assistance in shifting. So these external things dissolved and we started coming back here to this, um, quieting back in. And then we start noticing, holy cow, what have we been in, right? What has been telling me what to think and what to do and what to feel? And then these aha moments started happening for everyone. Um, right. That's kind of like what's so beautiful about this. Yeah. And I realized that, uh, for a lot of people that are listening, that could be overwhelming to see how amazing things can actually be. And so how do also, when it gets overwhelming to go back to the breath, as simple as that, and allow that overwhelm to pass through and realize it's your birthright you know, what we're, we're trying to put to words to talk about. And like you're saying that working with the breath, you just imagine it's pure light going into your system and it's, it's charging up. Like, like we heard earlier, it's charging up your whole system. It's powering you up that light that comes with the breath, the in breath and the releasing of the old with the exhalation for sure. (laughs) Well, I know we only have five minutes left and I would love to ask us all to sort of share, you know, we're, we're, this is going to end and, you know, we all, we're, we're going to go back into life, right? And we're going to do our thing. What, what are some tools? What are some ways that can assist us in moving forward in becoming more free, becoming more sovereign, becoming more like, how do I process this? How do I go through this? How do I start looking at what may be happening? Um, how do I hold that, that pain or that depression or that sadness that may be happening within me? How do I speak my truth? Like what are ways and tools that we can navigate um, going forward? And Jason, I'll start with you. What, are, what, are, what can you give us? I think the easiest way to move forward is to know that what you eat and what you drink and when you go to bed and how you exercise really affects your brain structure. There's a beautiful part of the brain just behind the forehead called the prefrontal cortex. That is an amazing part of the brain where the best of ourselves live. And if you live in fear or expose yourself to the mainstream fear buffet that never ends on the mainstream media, you have a deactivation of the prefrontal cortex. So the best of us shuts off. 
And when the prefrontal cortex shuts off because of fear, it act activates the limbic system known as the fight or flight. And that's a very low IQ. It's a sort of the slave key. It's if when it's when it's active, you're very reflexively obedient to authority. So if you'd like to take a more strong stance and a more powerful stance in your life, you do have to watch the quality of what you put in your mouth. You can't use your mouth as a human garbage compactor and expect to not live in an internal fear environment, which shuts off the best part of yourself in the prefrontal cortex. So the e easiest way to get started and to maintain and harness your own personal power is through health regimes, health ceremonies, and health rituals. And I always advise one book by Paul Check, C H E K. It's Paul Check's book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy. And if you bring that knowledge into your home by one of the world's uh, health gurus and leave it for people in your house to digest and, and process, you'll get sort of the activation of the brain function that we all need so that people can see the illusion for what it is. The prefrontal cortex is very quick to see the illusion, but the limbic system is very childlike. It's got, it doesn't have any ability to judge long-term consequences. So it's a sort of the brain function that the people who rule us like. So let's get out of that brain function. Let's take care of our health and watch what we eat, watch what we drink, and watch what media we uh, expose ourselves to. I think that's the first step would be it gives little little step gives you the most results. I love it. Zesis? Um, yes, absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with Jason. I will just add on to that. Um, adopt the curiosity of a child. How many of us can remember when we were four or five, everything seemed timeless. We just, we just were, right? So adapt that curiosity of a child. Um, allow, feel, be in this present moment. There is no past, there is no future until the present. Be in this present moment. And so feel, play, play create, and share. The more we can feel, the more we can allow to feel, the more we are inspired, the more we're allowed to play, the more we play, the more we create. And the more we create, we, the more we share and we inspire others. It's a, it's a massive playground, so let's all have fun. <laughs> yes. Lucia? Uh, don't feel alone. Uh, the changes that you're going through, uh, you're not alone. There's many, many, many hundredth monkeys happening and uh, don't be afraid to find a mentor a facilitator a modality that you connect with to support you during this process and don't ever feel like you're too small in the big picture because it's the tiny that are the powerful find like-minded people to gather with you are the company you keep so keep good company and even if you're gathering in small groups out in nature or in a hall somewhere you don't even realize how powerful you are. So I think that's a big message because I've obviously agree with everything everyone's already said, but sometimes that sounds cool, but how do I do that? And I feel so alone. I took this course and now I'm alone and I don't know how to keep doing it. Um, so find support, find like-minded people. And we have some amazing people in the world now on all continents holding space for you to join us with. So um, you did today and thanks for listening. And um yeah, I have, a, I have a question for Rocco. It's too short, too, not enough time now, but it's the, eventually I'd like to ask you the differentiation between sovereign and sovereign, S-O-V-R-A-N, um, because a lot of people are using the word I am sovereign now, but I lived with a tribal sovereign at the highest level. And um, it would be nice to somehow let people know the differentiation because I am sovereign in my spirituality. It transcends all of these parameters that are being put out there and these so-called rules and everything else that you are showing us are not so. Um, but I realize well, there's an aspect of that. And I want to honor my partner, the Tapit, for his high level sovereign as a tribal in Canada. And thank you. Well, that's that's a much larger discussion. I'm happy to have that on. I'm going to be having a podcast on our media company uh, where mm -hmm. I'm going to have guests. So we can have that longer discussion because it's just too, too long a discussion to have it in five minutes. But because Jason broke up a little bit on the transmission, I have in cross-examination a couple of questions for the panel. 
that'll take us three minutes up there. And, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I hey, love Miss Jacobs. You can Rocco. figure out that I'm calling this name. I can't pronounce it. That's okay. Sorry. So I love that acronym. You, you uh, fear a uh, 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 false evidence appearing real. Can I borrow that for my? <laughs> Since I never owned it. Of course. <laughs> Okay, good, good. So I'll borrow it and I'll hear from somebody, but I love that. And the, the real, the real point to question I have before we, we conclude is, so before COVID and before the COVID measures, you know, the people you mentor, the people you train, the people you interact with, what I imagine fear after COVID is one of the most, one of the more prevalent baggage they come to you with. Uh, how, how do you deal with that? How do you diffuse that? And uh, and I'm sorry, Jacob. I think you 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 answered the question, but I didn't hear the answer because you froze up on the screen. So if anybody wants to take it, maybe you can try again, Jacob. I'm sorry, I'm Jason. Uh, uh, do, do you see the dynamic of fear and the people you interface with and and uh, mentor? Yeah, I, I know how fear works. It's a vibratory entity and it can totally consume you in the way the reality is manifested. If you're vibrating fear internally, you will go out and find people and places and situations that have an equal vibration. So what we try to do is get their social media off, try to get them doing some positive thinking. I use a great hypnotherapy expert in the UK called Marissa Peer. She's one of the best hypnotherapists and we can change the inner vibration, the inner landscape and the inner frequency to something that's more loving and uh, calm so that when they go out and they will find calm people, they will find calm food, they will find calm TV shows. Very dangerous. If someone is electrified with fear, you will find they will go out and find very dangerous people to fraternize with. They will find dangerous foods to eat, dangerous uh, things to drink. And you see the suicides uh, you know, death by drugs, death by alcohol, death by junk food accelerating because the people who rule us know how fear works. They know this is going to be an outcome. So try to try to remove yourself and, and get some positivity in your life. Get a positive mentor and get away from the social media, at least the negative parts of it. I tell even people I work with, get off my social media platforms if if you're if you're not completely at peace. Right. So so a broad stroke, you'd say if you're fearful, don't stop hanging around fearful people and hang around people who are not afraid of this context. Is that, is that a fair statement? Yeah, guaranteed. Someone who puts a positive spin on things, someone who has positive role modeling. And a lot of people need parental figures, father figures, mother figures. Find someone that you can, humans copy and emulate and mirror what they see in the environment. So make sure you have something positive to copy and emulate and mirror. Make sure you have good role models that are healthy, they're moral and they're ethical. You certainly, you know, you're not going to get that on the mainstream news. You're going to see Doug Ford and that this is not the role models you want in your life. Well, I, I got to I want to sincerely thank all of you for coming on. I can say this without shame because I, I've never been so intellectually humbled in my life. I felt like a fish out of a teacup. <laughs> thank you very much for educating me and the rest of the viewers. And it's, 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 it's a wonderful roundtable. Thank you so much.